Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Uh, probably one of the biggest questions I get, one of, at least one of the most common questions I get, is people want to know how to get their new Free Sky Access enabled radio to work with this without one of those. And for the most part, you can do it. Now, there is a little bit of stuff that you got to do to make this happen. It's not, uh, it typically isn't able to do it straight out of the box. Uh, first thing we got to do is we got to talk about OpenTX. And we got to talk about the radio system here. <clears throat> Think about OpenTX as Android OS. Lots of different phones use Android. Android as operating system. Same thing with uh, Apple. Apple makes the phones. iOS or Android OS, I don't know, I don't speak their language, is the operating system. OpenTX is the operating system on this radio. It does not deal with what types of transmissions come out of it. It just handles the hardware and the user input side of it. So first thing we have to do is we got to Welcome make sure. Welcome to OpenTX. Switch warning. Are you done? Jeez. All right, come on. All right, so the first thing we got to do is we got to make sure that we have updated our operating system on our radio. These come with OpenTX 2.3 from the factory, prob or 2.3.0. Problem with that, that is a development build from FR Sky, and it's missing a lot of features, and you have got to update this thing. If you're not going to update OpenTX, then stop this video right now and go find something else because this is not going to work for you you have got to actually do this. So as you can see here, I have OpenTX version 2.3.5 installed on this radio. Uh, I'm not gonna cover how to update OpenTX in this video. I have a link to a video I've done previously on how to open, how to update OpenTX. It's an older video for an older version of OpenTX, but the process is exactly the same. 95% of it. That other 5% really doesn't apply too much here but you have got to update OpenTX. Just pick the newest version. Don't bother with the nightlies. You don't need any of that stuff, but go ahead and update it. Come on back here after you're updated. All right, welcome back. Thank you for following directions and doing that video. If you have issues with that video, check out my Discord. Uh, I walk a lot of people through how to fix this kind of stuff in there. The YouTube uh, chat thing is an awful place to do it. After about seven chats or seven back and forths, the chat falls off and I can't track it anymore. So please don't do that. Head over to Discord. Check the link in the video description for my for a link to my Discord server. All right. So now that we're back here, you have got to use a different model. These radios always come with one model preloaded. Scrap that thing. There are huge issues with that model trying to use D16 mode. So go to menu. And as you see, I have a bunch of other models. Go ahead and select this one, hit create new model. Uh, we're gonna be doing a multi-rotor and we're just gonna page through all of these. Yep, I don't really care. And there, all right, so we've got a model. We need to have a new model. Don't copy and paste, create a new model. Hit page. You can go ahead and name it. I'm not gonna do it just for time's sake. Scroll back to the bottom of the list and you're gonna have a couple options here. You can have external RF and internal RF. We wanna make sure external is off. Click on your internal RF and scroll to the right. You'll have access. We don't want that. And now we want ACCST D16. ACCST is the transmission protocol that these things and a lot of the uh, smaller SPI enabled quads use. And I should mention that this will only work if you have an SPI enabled quad. If you have one of the very first gen uh, Tiny Hawks, it's not gonna work. They used a S bus uh, receiver in that and this didn't work out. And another disclaimer, this sucks. I have not had a very good success using D16 with these SPI receiver boards. It's not this fault, it's this thing's fault. There's issues with the firmware. These things work really well on D8, that's why I really recommend going out and getting a multi-protocol module or the XJT light module so you can use ACST, ACCST D8 mode. That is the most reliable way to do this and it, by far the best way to do this if you have an access radio. 
But for the sake of this video, we don't have one of these. All we have is this and one of these. This is, by the way, a Mobula 6. All right, so now we have ACCST D16 enabled. We have to head over to the computer and make some changes on our quad in Betaflight. Let's head over there right now. Okay, so head over to the computer, load up Betaflight, make sure you have the newest version of the configurator. You have version 10.6.0 installed. Connect your quad and go ahead and get into Betaflight. Come over to configuration and down here on the receiver part of the configuration tab, where it says FR Sky underscore D, we want to switch that to FR Sky underscore X. Now, if you do not see SPI RX support here, you need to stop and research your flight controller manufacturer. It may not have an SPI receiver. If it doesn't, then this is probably not going to work. But this is a Mobio 6, it has an SPI receiver, switch to FR Sky X, and click Save and Reboot. Go ahead and power up your GX. radio. If you haven't already, go into your model, go to that page one of whatever, go to the bottom. And remember where we set our ACCST D16. Want to go down to bind. Actually, we want to change this to D8, or sorry, we want to change this to channel one through eight. Um, it's not necessary, but that's just the way I do it. Back over to beta flight. Click connect. Over here on the left hand side, you're going to come down to the CLI. We're going to use the CLI commands to bind. Now, depending on what version of Betaflight you have, there's different commands for binding in the CLI. I will put a, I'll put a bunch of them right here. I'll put them down in the video description so you can just copy paste. Nice thing about the new configurator, it has autocomplete. All we have to do is type B I N D press tab and it'll automatically fill in the rest of the command. Press enter. You're going to see up here, it's going to say binding. Come back over to your radio and hit bind. And we want to do one through eight telemetry on or off. It doesn't matter. I know people have said telemetry off will make it fly better. No, it doesn't. It doesn't help it. And again, not all these are the same. I've had these work on D16 that go, 100 yards, I've had them go 10 feet. It's really inconsistent. So go ahead and select one through eight telemetry on. You should start getting chirps. And now here's the part that everybody screws up. You have to go back over to the CLI and type S-A-V-E. Press enter, and then you can hit exit on your radio. And you should start seeing little bars here. If you see the little bars, that means you're getting reception from your receiver. You can confirm this by coming over to beta flight, going over to receiver and looky there. I am in D16 mode with a access enabled radio. Easy peasy, no problem here. Now with that said, and I've said it a bunch of times in other videos and in this one, I'm gonna say it again, your reception will not be great. You may get one of the lucky ones, you may be one of the lucky ones and you'll get really good reception and you'll be able to go you know, you'll be able to go just the same as on D8, but if you find that your reception is extraordinarily terrible, it's because you're using D16. And if that's the case, you have got to switch, either get a different radio, which I'm, you're probably not gonna do, or get that XJT light module. And that's it. <clears throat> that's all we gotta do to make this work with one of these XS radios. The process is the exact same for this, for the X Lite Pro, um, for the non-S version of this radio. Um, if you're in the market for a radio, I highly recommend this one. This is awesome. I absolutely love this radio. And I'll be honest with you, I'm going to have a hard time flying my Tango 2 because of this radio. I like this so much more because of its versatility. Again, it's not the most versatile radio in the world. Probably the the Jumper T16 is probably the, probably the most versatile one out there. But I just don't like that huge form factor and the weight of that radio. So I hope this works out for you. If it doesn't, I do really recommend just biting the bullet and getting one of these. They're not that expensive. They're uh, they're, they're they're worth having in your in your bag of tricks. I, I really recommend getting one of those. Now, if this doesn't work for you, a couple things you need to try. Make sure that you have updated OpenTX. If you haven't done that, like I said in the beginning, this is not going to work. Make sure you create a new model. Again, if you don't do that, this is not going to work. 
make sure you type save after you do the CLI commands. I honestly, I don't even use the button to bind these things anymore. I couldn't tell you where the button is on this, to be honest. Got to type save when you're done. If you don't do that, again, this is not going to work. Uh, it's very specific on how this works. There's not a lot of room for, for fudge factor or for just blowing off some of the steps. I may have missed something. Um, I've been doing this for a while, so maybe there's a step in your, your setup, your radio that I missed. If there is, hey, put it down in the description below. I'll try to try to walk through it as best I can with you. But like I said in the beginning, if you need help, head over to Discord. Uh, the, the YouTube chat is is no bueno. It's not good for this. All right, folks. Uh, I really hope this helps you out. I hope this gets you up in the air, gets you flying. If you like what I'm doing here or if I've helped you out at all, make sure you like and subscribe. Check out my Patreon page. If you feel like this content's helping you out, kick me over two bucks. How much is that in the grand scheme of things? That's that's like a McDonald's coffee in the morning per month. Just one less. It, does, it doesn't mean a whole lot to you probably, but man, it means the world to me. It really helps me out. Same thing with those affiliate links at the bottom. I know affiliates, we hear that. We all kind of like, that sucks, but you have no idea how helpful that is for me or any other YouTuber that has affiliate links. Clicking those links, purchasing through those links, help me out more than you could possibly imagine. A, that's kind of how I fund this program. And B, it also shows these vendors that people are interested in my content and they interact with me more. And this goes for everybody. All right, folks, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for checking us out. I uh, really hope that this helped you out. Um, if you're interested in the radio grips that I have here, I make these for the Tango 2, the Jumper T8SG, that one's on the way, the Jumper T8, X9 Lite. I have uh, the X Lite Pro on the way, X9D, um, the T16, I have a bunch of them out there. Uh, got stickers. If you want some of these, go ahead and head over there. And that's about all I got today. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for checking us out. Please show some love down there. Click that like button, subscribe, and I will see you all next time. Please update OpenTX.